Okay, thanks everyone. And I'd like to start by thanking the MQ Foundation for funding this research and for having me here today. So many of you will recognize this as Edouard Munch's famous image, the scream, and I'm sure you'll all identify with the feelings of anxiety and outright panic that the image portrays. And that's because anxiety is a completely normal emotion that we all experience that has evolved to help us deal with potential dangers in the world. Now, while we all know what it's like to experience anxiety, in as many as 30% of people, anxiety becomes excessive, more frequent, more intense, and grossly disproportionate to the situation. Anxiety disorders are the most common class of mental illness, and their annual economic burden across the globe is huge. So, for example, the UK alone spends £20 billion annually on anxiety. And to the individual, anxiety can be highly debilitating. Indeed, 70% of people who attempt or commit suicide have an anxiety disorder. Now, the number one treatment of choice for anxiety disorders is exposure therapy, which involves helping people gradually confront their fears in a safe way until their beliefs about the dangers in the world become much more realistic and their anxiety reduces. So here you can see a woman receiving exposure therapy for fear of heights using virtual reality technology. And once she's comfortable with this stage, she'll then progress to confronting heights in the real world. Now, while exposure therapy gives people with anxiety the best shot at recovery, only 50% of people completely respond. About half the people receiving exposure therapy either don't respond um, or relapse at some point after treatment. So we simply need to do better. We need to understand why do some people respond to treatment and others not? And why do some people show relapse and others not? And then we need to use this information to tailor exposure therapy to the individual so that it's maximally effective. Now, one particular factor that we might consider is sex. Uh, it's well known that women are twice as likely to develop anxiety disorders compared to men. And when they do, their symptoms are more severe, more chronic, and associated with greater levels of comorbidity with other mental illnesses. Despite this, we know virtually nothing about how sex or sex hormones influences anxiety or response to treatment. And to make matters worse, exposure therapy has been based on laboratory studies uh, that have been conducted almost exclusively in males. So what this means is that women may not be receiving the most effective treatment for anxiety because these treatments have been based on male models. And this may serve to further exacerbate the prevalence and severity of anxiety in women. So my lab, with the support of the MQ Foundation, has been examining the potential influence of the sex hormone estrogen on the ability to overcome fear of spiders in women with arachnophobia. And to do this, we've been using a laboratory model of exposure therapy, uh, where women are repeatedly exposed to images of nasty looking spiders like this one. And what we've found is that when women have high levels of estrogen, they learn to reduce their fear of spiders really well. And they maintain those fear reductions for at least 24 hours. But when women have low levels of estrogen, while they learn to reduce their fear initially, within just 24 hours, they show substantial relapse of fear. And so what this suggests is that women may be potentially less responsive to the benefits of exposure therapy if they're given treatment during periods of low estrogen, like when menstruating, when using the hormonal contraceptive pill, uh, postpartum or postmenopause. So now we need to determine whether these laboratory findings transfer into real world settings. So this year, my lab will be providing single session exposure therapy to women with arachnophobia during a period of high or low estrogen. And we'll then follow these women up over a period of six months to determine how well they maintain their treatment gains. We're predicting that when women have low levels of estrogen, they'll exhibit substantial relapse over time. Whereas when women receive treatment during periods of high estrogen, they may be protected from relapse and remain relatively symptom free. So if these results bear out, then this would suggest that with a few simple changes, we could really optimize treatment for anxiety in women. And these changes would be as simple as clustering exposure therapy sessions around periods of high estrogen, alternatively using estrogen supplements as a, a novel and safe pharmacological adjunct to exposure therapy, 
And if the most that these changes achieved was to reduce the prevalence of anxiety in women to a level that's comparable with the current rates in men, even this, given that anxiety is so overrepresented in women, should substantially reduce the overall burden of anxiety on society. Thank you.